Welcome to Barebones Camera, where we share the ins and outs of cinematography, breaking down real setups, and taking you behind the scenes on professional film shoots. Today's show is sponsored by Kinefinity. Hey everyone, Lili Bo Underwood here, and today I'm continuing the conversation about test footage I shot with Kinefinity's new cinema lenses, the Mavo Primes. Kinefinity approached me about testing them out, together with the Mavo LF, and I was curious to find out how they perform, since they are nicely built, cover full frame, and are quite affordable. I put together several tests to highlight a number of attributes I look for as a cinematographer, and in this video we'll have a look at mixed lighting, low light performance, bokeh, and lens flares in a night exterior setting. Many more tests can be seen in parts 1 and 2 on Barebones camera. My goal here is not to do a lens review, but actually to create a tool for other cinematographers to compare the different qualities of these lenses with other options that are out there, which I think is hopefully more useful. So let's get started. As we begin by walking with Kathleen through this really pretty Christmas market setting, we can start to get a sense of how the Mavo Primes and Mavo LF handle mixed lighting sources, the blue hour dusk, along with the varying color qualities of LED, fluorescent, and halogen. As it gets darker out and the market comes more alive, you can start to see the lighting mix more prominently. Here Kathleen is meeting her friend Patrick, completely by chance of course, along with Patrick's French bulldog Lola, who is sure to become an internet sensation. So in this section, their faces are all lit with available light, which in this area of the market was mostly a warm white LED or halogen. The camera was balanced throughout to 5600 Kelvin and shot at ISOs varying between 500 and 1250 with the lenses wide open at T2. So in this test, we can see how the bokeh looks at varying T-stops on the Mavo Primes. In this section, Kathleen's face is lit by a cinema LED panel at 4200 Kelvin, while Patrick's face is side lit with the same source and filled by available light from halogen sources. The camera is set at 5600 Kelvin to give a warm look, and at ISOs 640, 1280, 2560, and 5120 to compensate for the different T-stops. This is taking advantage of the Mavo LF's dual ISO sensor which I have to say is pretty impressive in this situation. As for the bokeh, I think it has a really nice look. Wide open, it has a bit of a swirly feel, similar to a classic lens. As you stop down, it has a more even look and a very round shape, with none of the sharp corners or noisy rim artifacts that you might find in other lens sets. Here's Kathleen walking through the Prenzlauer Berg district in Berlin. Here we can see some more examples of the lens's bokeh, and also what I find to be a pretty forgiving focus roll-off, where it doesn't feel too jarring when subjects go in and out of focus. 
On the 25mm, you can start to see the rainbow halo flare we discussed in part 2, coming from the light source in the middle of the frame, which goes away around T2.8. So let's have a closer look at that. For this test, I made use of passing car headlights hitting the lens directly, which is a very extreme way to produce lens flares. In most shooting scenarios, such intense flares would be really rare because direct light sources of this brightness would rarely be in frame. But here we can put the Mavo Primes under a stress test to reproduce that interesting rainbow halo flare that we've been seeing. As you can see, it's present on some of the lenses when they're wide open, but usually goes away by T2.8 or 2.8 and a third, and we're left with a much more normal looking flare. Again, under most conditions, the flares would also not be that intense. If you'd like to see the sun flare test with the Mavo Primes, check out part two. That about sums it up from my tests and overview of the Mavo Primes. Many, many thanks to our charming on-screen talent, Katrin Eichberger, for making all three tests possible, as well as Patrick von Bakenberg and Lola the Bulldog for today's scenes. For more tests of the Mavo Primes, check out parts one and two, where I look at other characteristics in both day interior and exterior settings. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to catch that, as well as more behind the scenes looks at cinematography and filmmaking technology on set. Thanks again to Kinefinity for making this test possible. This is Barebones Camera, signing off.